Hi all, uh, just out on the Vos 300 Rally. Uh, if anybody who's watched the videos over the summer, I had a, a 300 Rally Vos on test from the importer MotoGB who kindly loaned me one for a couple of trips and I think I took a few liberties and took it on more trips than they were expecting and it ended up doing 7,000 miles in just over two months. Uh, so down to the Alps for Stella Alpina, then lands then Johnny Groats and back and then down to Spain and up through the Alps again on the road so I kind of felt like I really put that bike through its paces and found out what it was good at, maybe what it wasn't so good at and where its uh, weak points are. Uh, in 7,000 miles it needed rear wheel bearings out in Spain which is premature I think and I think most people would say they could do with lasting longer. Um, I think I'm slightly of the pragmatic opinion that pragmatic opinion that um, for this sort of money, 3,795 quid plus on the road, there's always going to be a few ways in which a bike can be improved or a few ways in which corners have been cost, cut. And if a set of wheel bearings is the extent of that cost cutting, then I can kind of live with that. Uh, the rest of it seemed to hold up really well. The engine seemed to run really well to say it didn't have a very gentle running in period at all. From this sort of similar mileage, 96 miles when I got the I got the, that, that loan bike at about the same mileage and it was thr thrashed for the next 7,000 miles with no gentle running in. It had an oil change at just over 4,000 but didn't have any other servicing done to it. Um, and it ran sweet as a nut, that engine. I've got to be honest, the engine pulled lovely. Very smooth, crisp, strong power. It is low geared, this 300 Rally. I think for the type of riding I was doing on it, it could have done with uh, an extra tooth on the front or a couple down on the rear. I did buy a, a 45 cog, rear cog for it, but it uh, would have taken some links out of the chain and I think I was too busy trying to ride it rather than uh, faff with it too much, so I left the gearing as it was. But uh, um, I think it accounts for some of the accusations of this bike having... Oh, it's all happening down here today, typically quiet road, but... Uh, We've got a car in front and a, some sort of shepherds up being transported. It might be a turnaround job here, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Back roading in Devon. I'll go a different way. So yeah, that tr that um, test bike coat with it really well. And uh, I enjoyed riding it. I found it fun to ride in the mountains. I enjoyed the challenge of riding it with a faster group of bikes as well. Uh, obviously some of those have got you know we're on 790 KTMs and stuff so on the straights no chance of keeping anywhere near them uh, but um, through the corners through the mountains I really enjoyed the smaller engine having to work it having to just ride it that little bit harder and be a bit more in tune with it and I found that the the Vogue responded really nicely to that type of riding nothing changed about the suspension so I found that the on-road suspension behavior really compliant really composed supple but also controlled which to me is, is all you want from this kind of bike. It probably starts to get out of its comfort zone when you when you ride faster pace off-road uh, and I think that's to be expected again at the price point. Uh, but for the fact it could carry luggage without having to do anything to the rear shock impressed me uh, that it would do about 90 miles per hour on um, sort of a cruise. God this is bloody rush hour around here. On a cruise in the mountains was good. Tire wear was exceptional. At 7,000 miles, those rear tyres had still got the rear tyre had still got another five in it, probably. So, 12,000 miles. Decent grip in in dry conditions. I am finding these Timson tyres aren't the best when the roads are wet, cold, and greasy. There is a bit of movement, a bit of twitch there. You've got to ride around it a little bit. Uh, and I think uh, for winter riding in the UK, we definitely could do with something probably a bit softer compound and for the trails a little bit more aggressive. So yeah, just taking this steady, trying to run it in relatively gentle. I think the uh, what's in the, the owner's manual about the running in period is, is pretty impossible really. I think it's 400 kilometers. For the first 400 kilometers, don't exceed 40 kilometers per hour, which is like 30 miles per hour, or even less than that. It's really, you know, insanely low speeds for such a long time. I just don't feel that a bike needs it. Who am I? I'm not the engineer, but at the same time in the owner's manual it says it's a screw and lock nut valve setup and uh, people who have have gone to do the valve check have found it, it's a shim and bucket. So the owner, owner's manual's bobbins anyway. So we'll take it all with a little pinch of salt. The engine itself is KLX 300 engine uh, built on license or built in the same factory. I don't quite know the, the uh, 
dynamics of that relationship between Kawasaki and Lonchin, the builders of this bike. And uh, the rest is pretty much functional, steel frame, basic brakes, not a lot of feel to them, I've got to be honest, I, I think it would be nice to try some different pads in the front, not a, a lot of huge initial bite, but you kind of get used to it, if you're used to a Himalayan you'll be used to this, and I'd say that's what they're comparable to. Uh, there was a review in MCN recently against this and the Honda CRF 300 Rally. The CRF got uh, 4 out of 5 and this got 2 out of 5. Quite an, an atrocious write up. Criticised the gearbox, the suspension, the engine, the quality. Uh, it was, um, you know, it's one of those reviews which don't tally with what you make of a bike, but you have to respect as something different, a different person's opinion, just as we all have our own opinions. There were a few things I didn't make much logical sense like saying that these handguards are you know cheap and flimsy and uh, like they've come out of a toy shop well if they were testing it again alongside a CRF 300 rally they would surely have spotted that the ones on the Honda are even worse which are single point fixing and incredibly flappy so there are a few bizarre comments in that article which I don't you know I'm not saying that to degrade it in any way but uh, did make me scratch my head slightly in bemusement they also said it was um, not good off-road unless it was dry, hard pack, and I kind of I, I equally don't get that. We've got very similar similar geometry to the CRF. Uh, for me, the suspension is a little bit firmer, but it still is uh, as capable off-road. There's some people, you know, Chris Mosso I spoke to, who's a journalist, he said, you know, the damping's that little bit better on the Honda, and, and it probably is. That means that when you, you're pushing on it, it just is able to control the bike, maybe a little with a bit more finesse than on this. Uh, the problem with the CRF, that rear is so soggy that you 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 sat really on the on the on, on uh, sat really low down at the back end, which makes the front end light, which I find for road work makes it not handle quite as crisply as this. So, to me, it's a game of pros and cons, and and, and both bikes kind of being equal but different, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, for me, three thousand eight hundred pound versus six and a half thousand for the CRF means that this is you know to me a no a no brain option if. He wanted something just to bash along the lanes. Uh, it was interesting talking to Alan, the editor and uh, owner of Adventure Bike Rider, a chap I used to work with 10 years or more ago when I edited Adventure Bike Rider. Uh, he was always into big bikes, and uh, I was talking to him at the AB off uh, at the motorcycle sh live show. And uh, I said, What bike's taking your fancy? And he said, A Vogue for the simple fact that he could buy one, it's not a lot of money, and he could take it out every other weekend trail riding, and he won't worry about its depreciation or anything else about it because it's so cheap or affordable um, and I guess that's a bit where I am people say what's it going to be worth in three years time who cares what it's worth in three years time I would surely have had my fun out of it uh, by then and it's still going to be worth something much like the Himalayan was you know that was another one oh it's not going to be worth anything but the original Himalayan held its value so well for the first two years at least you couldn't pick a second one, hand one up for less than sort of three two, then down to three slowly, and even now, you 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 know you'll pick them up for less than two and a half, but they seem to have bottomed out at two and a half. So for me, the Vosges can only go, you know, if it loses a grand over three years, twelve hundred quid over three years, that's only four hundred pound a year running or depreciation. So I can live with that. Look at that for a view. It's over Saunton Sands over there, and then Biddeford in the distance. Lovely clear day. And then straight ahead we've got sort of Exmoor and out in the far distance we've got Dartmoor. I love it round here for riding it. It just is spectacular. And so quiet, certainly in autumn, winter, spring even, quiet as anything can be. Okay, we've got a nice long lane here, I'll just uh, do a continuous edit of it. Good chance to just get a feel for a bike. This is a kind of lane we could do a lot, do with a lot more of here in the UK, but they are quite rare to have one that's a couple of miles long. And uh, people say, you know, what do you, how do you get into trail riding? How do you improve? Or they, they find a lot of obstacles when they do try and get into it. And I think the problem is, we just don't have the the type of trails that are good for that novice rider or that beginner rider to uh, build their confidence on. It's kind of all or nothing. 
you might find a few very easy tracks that don't challenge them or don't progress them and then the next step will be some very difficult lanes which is too hard and then it puts them off because they can't do it um, so a lane like this is lovely just for stretching the legs of the bike stretching the legs of the rider just getting them some good long duration standing up time different surfaces different conditions along the way as you'll, as you'll see shortly but yes getting into trail riding is very difficult and I've had a quite a few emails recently from people who you know they're wanting to get into it they want to ride a bike off road they've never done it before they don't know where to start they don't know what bike to buy they go to off-road training schools and pay a lot of money for you know to be upskilled on on a bike they borrowed uh, in a slightly an artificial environment which are there to show off the best of the bike's abilities and then they go away and they get on their own bike and they get in their own local vicinity and they realize none of it really correlates everything they've learned is just so different to the real world of trail riding and then you get faced with that harsh reality that the only way you're going to get good at it or be confident at it is by doing it and to be honest learning the hard way by falling off crashing breaking things getting cold and wet and miserable and only then do you start to get the joy out of it but it's a long uphill struggle and i think a lot of people don't uh, well i think there's a problem at both ends a lot of people don't realize that and a lot of people who do do a lot of trail riding don't reveal enough about themselves in the fact that they've all got a, either a motocross or a trials background that probably started at a very young age which gives them a, a basic bike skill level of skill that enables them to get this you know even this bike 165 kilos quite a weight really to sort of pitch it down a track like this which is very unpredictable and I'm out here on my own which has got its risks in itself and, and so yeah the oh, harsh reality is trail riding is very difficult to get into if you stood on the outside of it there are groups to encourage you to get inside it such as the TRF but that's a bit hit and miss some groups I gather are very accommodating for novice riders and some you know seem as a bit of a nuisance I think and they go a few times and because they're not on the right bikes nearly got that squirrel and they're not of a certain ability they get sort of a little bit shunned which you can understand because if somebody's going out on a Saturday to do their pursuit of trail riding they don't want to mop up after somebody who can't stand up or do anything so it's a it does leave the frustrated novice not many places to go so I've got ABS still on I've not switched it off it is switchable at the rear and it would be beneficial to switch it off on the rear because it's I can just feel that back brake just pulsing not really giving me a lot of actual braking power because it's just pulsing its way into sort of paralysis let's say I can't turn the front off on this I bet I could pull a fuse if I knew which one it was but I've got to be honest most of the time with trail riding so you know, certainly on your own it's riding within your abilities so leaving a good safe margin which to be honest doesn't generally mean that ABS is kicking in all that often you know I'm not rushing it through here I'm picking a path through here I'm trying to be cautious trying to be smooth trying again leaving a margin for error got no lateral grip on that tyre but it's lo looking lovely what gear am I in? third I'll tell you what something wrong with my eyesight because everything's gone blurry and I've got my glasses on let's have a second because it's all gone a bit mushy Yep, yeah, we got it. Just countering the bike as, it, as the camera of the trail goes away. So these are on stock Timson tyres. As I said, they're not the best, but they're not the worst, and they've got lots of grip, um, lots of longevity. Uh, and they seem quite a soft compound. From what people have said, they're easy to get on and off, which is a big up upside of something like a Mitre CO7 which lasts a long time as well but are an absolute swine to get on and off so yeah these Timpsons aren't bad at all certainly if you're staying on tarmac and to be honest you know what 
Uh, we use tyres as an excuse a lot of the time. If we accept that sometimes a tyre is not going <laughs> to drastically change a bike, and accept that it's more often than not the rider, we might be happier or more content to leave the tyres that we've got on and actually improve our A game or our riding ability. So I think I'm second now, climbing uphill, soft throttle, just trying to stay up high. Yeah, second. Got that engine's, it is revving, it's happy at that. Got some constant rev on. Probably not the best way of running it in, I've got to be honest, but you know what, life's too short. It really is too short to be fucking looking at your speedo and your rev counter and saying, should I be doing that or should I be doing that? Life is far too short. Just get on the bike and bloody ride it. Pick up the pieces afterwards. Whoa! There we go. God, my vision is absolutely shagged. I don't know what's up with it. I couldn't see up there. So there we go. Nice long trail, that. Perfect trail. Let's have a look at that bike. A bit You've also got to accept trail riding is tiring. I mean, I'm tired coming up there after that. Sore arms, feel it in the legs. It's in your shoulders, it's in your neck. You know, you're not in a natural position. For the average 50 year old bloke who wants to go trail riding, that's a full on workout. That's harder than three hours at the gym. Um, which again, we sort of forget. We don't accept that we are physically exerting ourselves by trying to get 165 kilos of metal, rubber and plastic up a muddy, sloppy slope, you know, and let alone when people think they're going to do that on a 250 kilo GS or Africa Twin uh, in their early days of trail riding, you know, it's just not going to happen, not going to happen, which again, a few people ridicule me or criticise me for saying start with a small light bike, but that's exactly where I'd be starting, small light bike, you can get anywhere on a small light bike, and if it all goes pear shape, you can get yourself back out of it as well, so that's it. I'm going to keep on riding. I might show you another little bit depending on where I end up. 112 miles on it. It's poor engine, eh? Poor engine. Original oil. I got some filters when I bought it. In fairness to the dealer, he acknowledged that the distance from me to him was too long for me to bring it back in. I'm going that way. Do you want me to go? Okay, I'll go. Are you okay? Thanks. There we go, just had a horse. Uh, yeah, so the dealer acknowledged that... Um, the dealer acknowledged that uh, I wasn't going to go back for servicing. So I did buy some some filters and I'll just do I'll do an oil change at about well I'll do an oil change at the end of today I think it's a litre and a half or 1.8 or something like that put a new filter in I just carry on taking it semi gently on the engine uh, and uh, so there we go but uh, yeah that uh, that test bike I had at 7,000 miles was running like a like running so sweet I mean you could say why didn't I buy that and they did offer it me at a, a good price but not enough to tempt me away from just replacing it with a new one and uh, starting again really with my own bike. That's Buckland, let's go there. I know a green lane there. I find it fascinating these villages. Just middle of nowhere. Well, not really middle of nowhere, but they feel so remote and isolated. And then they've got a church in them, like a, a proper grand old church. And you think. How on earth did they build that? Why on earth did they build it? Well, how many years did it take? How many people? How many people used it afterwards? It's um, so many questions, really. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, just incredible, isn't it? The efforts that we went to to build those kind of places. I guess pillars of religion, places to pray and to 
gather together, come together, celebrate, commiserate, mourn. Yeah. Look at look at this. I mean, it's. I said it on the ACT video when we were doing the Yorkshire sort of back roads, you know, middle of Yorkshire Dales, where there's nobody else around, but these little villages and hamlets. You think, what a backbone we had as a nation to uh, to to craft these out of the ground, to drag the stones out of the earth, and to cut them and shape them and construct them into these grand villages and conurbations that just make no sense in a modern era that, that they went to that much effort but they did and it must have took so much time effort sweat blood and tears but the fact they still stand the test of time today is incredible really bloody hell imagine living down here on this corner It's amazing. England, Britain is amazing for, for that there. That is Britain in a in a hairpin bed there. Incredible. And then here I am on me. Chinese bike built in a Chinese factory by people who never see this, witness this, understand this. And likewise, we not understand them. What a glo you know, it's a what a global world it's it's become, for better or worse. You know, to think that the same nation that built those houses back there, or well, these houses here, also once built a motorcycle in industry, the premier motorcycle in industry in the world, and now now it's all gone. It's all Chinese. We don't build anything like we used to build it. Not even the houses, not the motorbikes, not even the people. We're a different nation, aren't we? We are a different nation. Better or worse? Well, we'll all have different judgments on that, but it's certainly a a forever changing world, just think, when you think things are stabilised and you've got your head around life along comes something else to make you reconsider it all I mean these bloody corners who thought corners were a good idea here? like why didn't they build straight roads? why didn't they make the fields straight? why didn't they make it like Norfolk? mental I don't even know I haven't got a clue who I am I haven't a clue <coughs> okay and there's uh, there's Hogwarts look at that for a building whoopsie okay one last lane can't see a bloody thing. My eyes are terrible. I don't know. I don't know what's up with my eyes. That's not good, is it? Motorcycle talk. I can't see. No, they're not terrible. It's just on the trails. These leaves. These leaves are so hard to almost blur in my vision. I better go and book an appointment with my GP. See what she says. Okay. Opens up here. Nice bit of a lane here. Certainly when it's dry, all opens up. Whoa, yo, 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 I've got good adjustment on the throttle. And that's what it's about really. How do you steer a bike off-road? Throttle. Throttle throttle and feet. Throttle and feet. it does bobble along here it does actually you know it's this kind of track which just brings out the uh, Voges budget underpinnings or budget suspension 
just bobs. It stops absorbing and it's just starts sort of shaking a little bit. Not terrible, and at a pace that's you know a sensible pace, it's not an issue. If you wanted to ride faster, you'd you'd start to find that becomes an issue. Obviously a public lane, so mindful of anything else coming down here, whether it be vehicles, bikes, horses, cars, another motorcyclist, another Vosges. Imagine another having a head on with another Vosges coming down here. How random would that be? Just tucking it in. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Up to third gear now, a bit on the throttle. Okay, there we go. End of today. I'm not sure that's getting a good gentle running in, but I'm not being too aggressive on it. Certainly not on the engine, not moving it hard, trying not to lug it. I'll come back to it. Doesn't do the job, innit? Fun to ride, capable. <coughs> I think give that. There's nothing wrong with the rear, actually. No, I can't find. Well, my riding doesn't bring out any faults with the rear suspension and I think only when I sort of push on do I feel a little bit of chatter from the front it'll be interesting to see what the aftermarket supplies but I can't see where why there won't be a, a, an uprated shock for front fork for that uh, and I'm not saying it needs it but I'm just saying if it had it it would uh, it would elevate the bike even further so I mean that'd be something to watch out for but obviously get some knobblier tires on this but they do you know like they do the job there's not a lot of front lateral purchase wants to wash a bit certainly on the slot but that's to be expected it's more of a trials tire it's almost more of a road tire so anybody looking at one of these what can it do you know the, the mcm review said it can't do wet mud can't do wet lanes can only do dry lanes um, i'm not going to say maybe the rider could only do dry lanes but the bike can do wet muddy lanes and these are gentle lanes that I'm picking not to work the engine. There's far more challenging lanes we could do once the engine's run in and some knobbly tyres on and the bike will do it. So uh, the bike has got capability beyond me as a rider and maybe other people as a rider. Who knows? But uh, yeah, it's a good old bike. 3,800 quid. I don't, well, how do they do it, the Chinese? Slave labour, probably. Should we care? Yeah, should we? Probably. Yes, we should. But uh, financial imperatives are hard to overlook when everyone's out for a bargain. Right. <sighs> Will the new Himalayan be better up this lane? No, it won't be. Cause I think it's going to be a heavier bike. It's going to be a heavier bike. It's going to be 40 kilos heavier than that. So no, for this kind of riding, something like this is going to be better than this, or the CRF. Will the Himalayan be better as a travel package? Yes, of course. Will it be better as a lane package? Less so. Um, but road and trail, probably a better balance than something like this. So, say Iceland or whatever, and Morocco, probably better than this. But different bikes, different purpose. Right, cheers. <laughs>